Sean Daniel Jones might be the most mobile of the quarterbacks you've seen so far. How much of a problem does he present with his running? I think quite a bit. Um, when you go back and look at just his career, uh, I've seen him with a walk-off touchdown against Tampa Bay. You get into some of your man coverages where the eyes are on the receivers and you know rush patterns aren't perfect. You know he can climb the pocket and you know instead of an eight-yard gain, he can. So he's he's real athletic. They'll use him on some design, you know, cut QB runs. Um, but that adds a dimension, you know, relative to your defense, especially when you're in you know, some of your man-to-man -man coverages. Uh, Sean, uh, the news broke uh, the last couple of days about uh, Mrs. Benson's possible secession plan. Just your thoughts on, I don't even know if you kept up with it. But I haven't. Had nothing, nothing. I asked Mickey about something, but I, I have no idea. Um, I think she's going to outlive all of us, so <laughs> <laughs> I kind of paid more attention to the things that affect me. Um, but I, I just saw what, what you guys initially saw, but I haven't paid attention to it. Sean, you guys have used two running backs to great effect, really, ever since you've been here, that have two different skill sets. What is the value in that in keeping defenses off balance, especially, I guess, when you have them on the field at the same time? Well, look. If they're on the field at the same time, there's a there's a reason for it, you know, and and it's usually treated by the defense, you know, kind of that second back, call it Alvin or Reggie or Sproles, you know, as a third receiver. Um, but also there's a you know there's a wear and tear to that position, and um, I think I think it's hard, you know, 16, 17 now regular season games. You know, it's, it's hard for that position to stay healthy. Um, and so I think all along, you know, I've been taught to have depth at that at that position. You know, that there's there can be attrition there. And fortunately, we're healthy. And but uh, I, I just think that's that's worked for us now. I just gave you three examples of some pretty unique like Joker t guys that could catch the ball or do other things um, if you don't have that you, you know then the, then you're in a different mindset but I still think you need depth what have been you, kind of your takeaways from Tony's first three weeks you know a young guy in that role it's been good he had a good training camp I thought he had a real good training camp and and I think he's got some good film right now um, probably got to you know get him a few more touches it was hard obviously when you play a game like we did in Carolina you know, no one's getting the snaps or the touches because we're not on the field long. But um, yeah, he's doing well. He's smart, and he, he has a lot of versatility. And so when you have like a, like a week to get somebody like like James Hurst, kind of more up to speed to playing that 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 first unit with the, alongside those guys, does that help you? Like, can you do more things now with with him in there? That I don't think maybe... things change relative to what we want. I mean, look, he's an experienced starter really in our league and so I don't think um, let's just take last week when Teron got hurt which was fairly early right I don't think right away we're doing less because of his absence I mean we're you know we're we're running the offense and if you said number one he has to block the end you know if you if you start just very very simply in pass protection a lot of times in the run game, sometimes not. And then there's some nuances relative to the other things. But he's, look, he's played for us at guard. Um, he's, a, he's a very versatile player, and, 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 and I'm glad we have him. Chad, has there been any benefit of just getting back here, getting in the routine? And yeah, to get a I think long time, long. first off, I mean, time for the players. We're finished today. We'll, we'll meet. and. You go through the week and Wednesday staff meeting is at 5.30, you know, when we were on the road because, you know, it was more like 7, 7.30. And so then you start game planning after that, you know, one or two in the morning versus midnight, you know, so time um, because of your proximity. And I'm, it's all the other things, obviously, the biggest thing relative to the game itself, though, is crowd noise, that that impacts a game. And so, 
Man, it has been, I can't think of the last, I'm guessing the last time we had crowd noise was a playoff game, right? And two years ago, yeah. you know, Minnesota, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. So that'll be nice. Can you get a sense of what it might be like Sunday? After like the fans have been waiting for about, almost a month for a home game? Yeah, listen, I think they'll be excited. We're, we're excited, you know. Um, yeah, I, we've been practicing it because there's some things that take place defensively that are challenging. You know, when you have crowd noise, your communication on defense is stressed. Like your offense is stressed when you're on the road. So um, there's a benefit defensively because it's, it's harder to be, you can get off on the snap count, but there's still a communication challenge on defense with the crowd noise. So it's getting used to that. So where's the confidence in Rosas right now at the last week? Say it again. Confidence in Aldrich Rosas right now? Oh, I, listen, he's a veteran player. Um, he's got tremendous leg talent. And I look back really and, you know, it's, it's a, a tough kick to start when, when you have the winds, they're 14 miles an hour and really blowing across the field. Um, it's a tough place to kick. And again, I went through the type of game I thought it was going to be, you know, t two weeks, three weeks before that we went for it. We decided to kick it there, but um, he's doing good. Y'all designated Will Clapp for return from IR this week. Uh, does that change anything with y'all this week or just that just help with the designation? You know, yeah. that means um, if we want to bring him up, if we need to bring him up, we can. But we have a handful of these guys, hopefully in the next call it three to four weeks that we're going to have some guys gradually coming back. That's encouraging. Sean, that Saturday meeting with the quarterback when you guys kind of go over everything, does it help going through that a few times? Does it change maybe third, fourth time through it with a guy? Um, well, look, each week is a little different because there's some, there's different plays. Um, yeah, you get in a routine. We, we typically have it. Um, 10 o'clock, 9.30 p.m. Saturday night, and we'll go through every play on the list. We'll cross a few off if we don't like them, and then we'll put a, you know, a Sharpie dot next to the ones we like and try to, try to get those called. Um, but it also helps because you're really discussing the game you know, through the quarterback's eyes and, and through the play caller's eyes. And... Um, so I, I, I think it's a good final review. Does it help, like, talking to him maybe a few times, figuring out kind of what, what he likes? Does that help you at all? Like, when you can kind of, kind of go through that conversation with him multiple times? Just going back to Drew, or Teddy, or Luke McCown, or whoever's starting. I, I think, yeah, Taysom. I mean, it, I, I want to hear what they, I want to hear what they like, but I also want to hear what they don't like or feel comfortable with. I think that's important to know. And then hopefully every once in a while there's something I really like maybe. And, and you know, if I've done a good enough job, I've, I've given them the looks that it's one that they like as well. And sometimes we get to that meeting and, and maybe it's maybe it's for next week, you know. Um, but I, I think it's a good process. Is there a stat of the week for this week? Stat of the week. Yeah, you ready? Yep. So we were talking about turnovers. You know, there's takeaways, which is a defensive stat. There's giveaways, which is an offensive stat. And then there's differential. And I was just curious to find out what's the, the number one best turnover differential in the history of our league. So that means turnovers offset by takeaways. And so it's obviously in the high plus something or other. Any guesses? So this is history of the league, Go history back. ever. Three, single, single season or single season? Yeah. Oh, single season. Okay. Three, three, uh, nine. Uh, no, plus thirty. So. Yeah. Thirty something. All right. Washington in 1983, they were plus 43. Jeez. <laughs> they were 16 and 14. Excuse me. They had 16 games. They were 14 and two. So. That's adding up their takeaways and their giveaways. I don't have specifics as to how many take, but 43 is the next best number is 33, 30, 29, 28, 28, 28, 26. So it's 10 higher than that.
it's pretty considerable. Do you know That's, what y'all's best two cents Um, I think it was 2009. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.